Aki. Well, David Cameron said he still wanted to see a robust response to the use of chemical weapons in Syria, but any missile strike won't have British involvement after last night's shock defeat in the Commons in the vote on whether to intervene. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, reports on claims that both David Cameron and Britain have had their standing diminished by last night's events. David Cameron left Downing Street today for checkers, forced by his own MPs to abandon a military attack on Syria. He could have been spending the weekend at his desk looking at maps and targets as part of a joint military strike with the United States. This is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. The U.S. tonight appears to have just lost a key ally as it tries to build consensus for a punishing military attack on Syria. There's the U.S. media was shocked to see its old ally reject joint military action against Syria. Probably shocked too to see it's the French president who will be side by side with the Americans in any attacks. This is the moment last night MPs realised the government had lost the vote. The rules require the winning side to stand on the right in front of the speaker to read out the result. David Cameron's immediate response was to rule out British military action and he repeated that pledge today. But on this specific issue, because of the huge concerns about this appalling Syrian conflict and people worrying about how we might get sucked into it, on this specific issue, that trumped, as it were, uh, the sense of outrage about the chemical weapons. Now, I understand that. I get that. We will not be taking part whatever in military happens, action, but it doesn't change. Whatever America does, whatever happens in Syria, oh. if there's further use of chemical weapons, it, it's ruled out now. Well, the British, military British Parliament has spoken very, very clearly. The Chancellor, George Osborne, said the defeat called for national soul-searching about Britain's readiness to perform an international role. Well, I think we're going to have a debate about Britain's role in the world, but I hope that Britain remains a country that cares about the world around it, doesn't turn its back on the world's problems. Many Conservative MPs believe that foreign military intervention by Britain in Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan and beyond has got out of hand in the last two decades. They hope last night's government defeat will signal a turning point, a reining in of British Prime Minister's ambitions. But I think our role in the world has probably changed this week. And you're comfortable with that? I think we have to accept where we are, and I think it's where the British people are. I think there's a long shadow from Iraq hanging over the British people and our, our consciousness about war and intervention and our place in the world. And I think that, that, that weighed heavy this week on Parliament and in the country, and we need to reflect on that. We've, for a long time, had a sort of post-imperial pretension that we can be the policeman to the world at any time the Americans choose to get, uh, to get involved, that we should be there along, alongside them trying to big our role up. Those who'd wanted military action said its rejection by MPs was a betrayal of civilian casualties in Syria. Now added to, they said, by these victims in Aleppo, wounded by white phosphorus. I have never felt more depressed or, I'm bound to say, ashamed this morning, but now I have to wake up and watch children burning on the television sets as they were last night and say that the answer of my country, the answer from my country is nothing to do with me. Um, a bad night for the government. I think a bad night for Britain too. Ed Miliband insisted he wasn't an isolationist, but the relationship with the US had got too close. It came into politics after the Cold War. And I think part of being a politician of the Cold War was you thought, well, if I disagree with America, I'm on Russia's side. And, and you know, were, people were sort of neuralgic about that. I, I think you can take a different position uh, from America. Now, I want to be supportive as possible with America, work as closely as with them and would do uh, as Prime Minister, but sometimes you'll disagree. Just over an hour ago, David Cameron finished his first phone conversation with President Obama since the Commons' defeat. He finds himself in the embarrassing position of having tried to get the United States for months to take action against Syria, and now having to tell them he won't be able to join in. President Obama told David Cameron that he understood the processes of Westminster, but that the special relationship was intact. David Cameron told the president he still believed in the strong response the United States was considering, even if his own MPs and Labour ones too had prevented him from joining in. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News, Westminster.